we are here with Daniel James of Indonesian Junk. Thank you for joining us today, Daniel. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Um, so you have a brand new album out, or is uh, was due out? Yeah, March nineteenth. Yes. So the new album is titled "Living in a Nightmare." Uh, before we get into that, why don't you introduce the rest of the band who couldn't join us today? Um, well, it's me on uh, lead guitar and vocals. Um, who our bass player, who's been in the band for pretty much the entire existence of the band, Johnny Cyanide. Um, Mike Matner is our drummer. He's he's been in the band almost the whole time, but not as long as Johnny. And uh, the newest member of the band is Adam Turetsky on second guitar. Okay. So your new, uh, so this is the first album with, as, with the band as a four piece and the new album Correct. is called Living, yes. Living in a Nightmare. Um, you can pre-order it now at indonesianjunk.bandcamp.com. Um, so one of the things I noticed, I guess, is this album seems to be a little bit more, dare I say, poppy? Um, yeah, I think it. Uh, I think it's probably the poppiest thing we've done. So, yeah. Was was that intentional, or is that part part of kind of fleshing out the band with another guitar? Oh, uh, I think it just kind of happened that way. Um, didn't. I don't even think the other guitar had much to do with it because I like a lot of the songs were written um, after. Oh wait, my microphone is sliding down, so <laughs> I'm gonna tighten the stand quick. Sorry. Um, uh, a lot of the songs were just like written after the pandemic started by myself with an acoustic. So I think maybe just, yeah, I don't really know what made it poppier. That's just kind of the songs that came out of me, you know, but at the same time, I feel like, like the title track is probably the punkest song we've ever written at the same time, right. you know, but like as a whole, it's definitely like the poppiest thing we've done so it's it wasn't it just happened that way i don't know mm -hmm. it just it's uh yeah yeah and and, and i say that more and, and you could also kind of call it maybe the hookiest you know just yeah you know the, the or catchiest i guess you yeah. know and and it, yeah it's it interesting because it still sounds exactly like an indonesian junk yeah. album just kind of a, a maybe an evolution in your sound yeah. and even even being somewhat of a poppy or a catchy album you know it still has that kind of um, darker tinge to the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> Which I guess, you know, maybe is part of uh, being written during the pandemic. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's, I didn't even really think a lot of the lyrics were that dark, but uh, I guess you're not the first person to say that though. I feel like it's some of the like happiest songs we've written, but I mean, there is like, definitely there, it does touch on darkness, like, like the title track, obviously. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I don't know. I like, I feel like a lot of previous albums were like, I don't know, more depressing. I don't know. Like, no, whereas, that, yeah, that's probably true. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how did, so you, so you wrote all of these um, tracks during the pandemic. Were you able to get together with the band to rehearse and record them? How did that process go? Uh, well, we obviously, like, I started writing in like March. Um, in April and yeah we were not doing anything together then and then we kind of started doing like around June like uh masked up socially distant rehearsals and then re after we recorded the album we have we, we kind of were like we should just hold off and once it's safe we'll start rehearsing again like it was it kind of was a little scary I think mm -hmm. after a point where like we'd already like committed to it so we were doing it but um yeah but we did we did rehearse in a room together uh like for a couple weeks before we recorded everything so okay and then did that did that did that rehearsal kind of getting the rest of the band in on on the on the songs I guess you you probably shared it with them did that change yeah the arrangements uh, at all or um well i i'd done like some yeah i've, I've sent everyone demos beforehand so with like drum machine and stuff mm -hmm. and uh but it definitely i don't know they definitely get better when like johnny mike and adam are playing the songs just because it's uh more especially like johnny and mike because it's like i don't know i can program a drum machine but it's not gonna sound as awesome as mike does on the drums and um, right you know like the bass I don't know. I'm a bass player, but like if like kind of when I'm throwing the bass on my own like demos, it's almost like an afterthought after I wrote everything. Whereas like 
you know, Johnny paid more attention to it. So it's like the, it's pretty true to the demos, but definitely like feels more like a band where those guys have their personality on it as opposed right. to just the demos did. So did, did being able to write for a second guitar and kind of fill out that guitar sound? Um, at all? Not really. I, don't, I mean, cause I always played second guitar on the records before. Okay. Um, it more so uh, like confined me to like just making sure what I was playing on my guitar. Uh, I don't even know where I'm going now, but uh, yeah. To, um, I don't know. It's like, it really, like I've always written for two guitars anyway. Okay. So like it, it was always the goal to have two guitars in the band and we've had other guitarists in the band mm -hmm. throughout the existence of the band, but no one was like as permanent a fix, as a, of a fixture as Adam was where like, they just, I don't know. It did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So and, like, yeah, you can, you know, kind of, you know, being a being a fixture in the band can maybe add add some more flavor yeah. to those guitar parts rather than just kind of yeah. playing what what's been written. It was weird too because he actually did not rehearse much. Uh, we were kind of scared that he wasn't going to be able to make it onto the album because he's in Chicago. Okay. And he like there there's definitely like travel. I don't know if travel band like restrictions on travel for a long mm -hmm. time. So um, like he, even though like all of us were like isolating and not like going out and doing stuff like he um still was like you know not gonna come up to market practice until like i think we rehearsed with him like three times total and it's okay. amazing because he learned everything he learned it all from the demos like i was kind of worried that he wouldn't even get to play on all the tracks like i thought i was gonna mostly do both guitars like i usually do on the records but he came in like first first rehearsal with us and like had everything almost down like he so he ended up playing on every track where i was worried that he wouldn't get to oh excellent very cool yeah so and then you were able to record this over at, at howell street yeah and you guys just, just how did that go um it was we've recorded there in the past this was mm -hmm. obviously a lot different too because of the pandemic where it was mm -hmm. um uh you know like we we're never in the same room as Shane at the same time, which um, okay. was took a lot of the fun out of it. Right. Cause usually, uh, you, I don't know, like getting to hang out with him and like the mixing booth and stuff has always been one of the, the funnest points of making the record and stuff. But, um, and, you know, it was like definitely, especially like after vocals started, we had to be like really sure no one was around because then I took my mask off and, Right. was shooting like <laughs> dangerous particles into the air and no yeah ab ab absolutely so you guys put this together it was mastered by carl saff and then you're uh releasing it in march um you know yes. you, what would make you just kind of uh i guess with not really knowing whether you're going to be able to to tour or play out to support the album yeah you just feel that yeah. the, the songs needed to get out yeah i mean i just wanted to put it out um like i would hopefully we can tour at some point mm -hmm. in the future but at the same time i'm like not gonna let that stop me from putting it out like i feel like right. like if if tours don't happen for another year like probably just have another record then, right know? exactly i'll just have like like i mean it's kind of weird because like definitely like it's probably going to be a money losing venture because of the fact that you know like a good we, like, we we pre-order we sell a lot of pre-orders and stuff but mm -hmm. i feel like the majority of the records we sell are like at our shows on the road and um you know there's definitely been more people ordering it from us but like that helps a lot to recoup the costs especially like making money from shows and stuff but um i like if we don't tour on this record like we'll tour on the next one it's okay. um, i don't know i just i'm always going to be making music i can't like stop i can't shut that part of my brain off <laughs> like, right no exactly yeah no and uh, talking to other artists there's you know there's a number of artists that have said huh. they kind of have, have that same thing where it's just like by the time you get on the road you may have two albums or <laughs> more <laughs> worth of material to <laughs> to be debuting live um so you guys have uh you you're pressing vinyl for this record um, yes how is that how is that process going I've, I've seen a lot of a lot of the vinyl 
process gets slowed down due to everything? Um, this one is not going to like it's going kind of normal. We okay. the the vinyl for our last album uh did that got held up at the beginning of the pandemic. Oh, okay. So that really like took forever to come out. Like I mean that album officially came out last or in fall of 2019 and we didn't get the vinyl until the middle of summer okay um so i mean it's, i still have a lot of those that's practically a brand new lp on top of everything um but this time around it's it seems like there's still a little bit of a delay but i think that delay might have more just to do with the fact that we're pressing it around record store day time so there's okay. always like kind mm-hmm. of a delay whereas yeah we're not going to have vinyl until june according to the pressing plant but i don't think that's out of the ordinary like we just sent it in um a couple weeks ago so okay so our um the, the new album again is titled living in a nightmare, nightmare. Yeah. yeah invasionjunk.bandcamp.com um, do you guys have anything else going on right now other than just preparing to get the this this album out? Yeah, um, that's about it. Uh, like I said, we haven't done any rehearsals in a while. Uh, mm-hmm. I haven't started really writing a, anything new. I've been like mostly working on a new comic book is okay. what I've been doing to fill the creative urge while the band has been not rehearsing. So yeah. Um, like i mean we plan to we still like talk regularly like we have a right. our our band chat is pretty active and i hope i mean like i hope we all get vaccinated soon and start rehearsing soon enough at least um even if shows don't happen right away like right to get yourself back into the yeah you know, the swing into the swing yeah. of things and kind of get those created yeah and, and yeah. you know it, it definitely is different to to play with other musicians than it is just to, to like try and yeah. demo stuff yourself and yeah especially those. uh like we haven't we haven't like played any of the back catalog together in years now it's like since yeah almost a year like since the, mm-hmm. the pandemic happened like we have you know like because the whole one we're doing that we're just like we're focusing on the new stuff so it's i don't know we really want to get like back into the swing of doing that again but um i yeah i feel like that's not gonna happen until all four of us are vaccinated which right. i hear by the end of summer anyone that wants to be vaccinated will be so hopefully hopefully that's true no absolutely absolutely yeah you mentioned the back catalogs you also um you know you, you had a lot going on since we talked last it's been, it's been a little bit but yeah this summer you released um a life of crimes your your rarities yeah um uh, rarities and and um singles it, it, singles, yeah, it's, singles yeah. album singles so you, and rarities yeah. yeah so you have you have a back catalog that's kind of fresh that you can <laughs> yeah fall back on when you guys get together yeah yeah i mean if you count that that singles comp as an album mm-hmm. we have this will be our fifth album now so right like so it's yeah we got i mean we obviously only play like short sets so um, right. we won't be playing all of that but obviously we don't want to like neglect spider bites which is an amazing record um we want to like play those songs again and some of the other rec- records and stuff you know no, and and you'll be getting you'll be kind of uh, bringing Adam on board to those songs too. Yeah, now that he's he's in the band, so yeah, he's um, played them though. Like we we luckily got to play four shows with him before everything shut down. So okay. we had a whole string of dates lined up too, which is yeah, like he had, so he you know he's played those songs li- live with us before, but it just uh, okay. not as often as everyone else because like once once we were like ready to get him playing live, like we booked a ton of shows played four of them and then everything got really weird really fast (laughs) right yep so you also had a couple on the on the new album um living in a nightmare you had a couple of guest vocalists and some other musicians play on the album as well yeah that's um kind of the first time we've really done anything like that uh realize like how easy it is to do stuff like that um because of like online collaboration that's been becoming more of a thing with the pandemic, but it's always been there, but it was kind of like Miski who sings on the last track. It, she used to be our guitar player a long time ago on our first tour. She never recorded with us though, but she has like an amazing voice. And I, 
like just hit her up. I was like, can you record a vocal? And she recorded it at her home studio and sent it back the next day. And same thing with uh, Kurt Baker. I just asked if he wanted to do a vocal on a track and he like sent me, sent it back to me the next day. And then uh, my roommate, Ian Alvera, who's in the great band Daydream Retrievers, uh, he played some uh, organ on it, which mm -hmm. we, he, we just recorded that right here at our house. Like that wasn't even in the studio. I just recorded a track and sent it to Shane and he mixed it in like right away. So. Okay. So you, yeah. And you guys have been working with Shane for a while now. So uh, pretty, you know, other than, other than the social distancing and the pandemic, a yeah. pretty smooth, you know, familiar process. Yeah. yeah. Like luckily, like we've worked with him enough where he knows what, he knows how to mix us. He knows how to record us. He's like, like worked with us enough where he knows our sound and like, we're comfortable with what he did. It's, um, it was slightly different because like he did it all, like was sending me mixes, whereas before I would be in the room with him. Right. And, um, but like I said, like he's done it enough where it was really easy for him to mix everything. And like, there was not many revisions that had to be made. Okay. Right. So the, the new album is uh, Living in a Nightmare by Indonesian mm -hmm. Junk, and it comes out on March 19th. Yes. Thanks for joining us. It, um, oh, what, uh, one it, last thing. Uh, yeah. You, you already mentioned you can get the LP and digital from our band camp, but uh, yep. this, it's also available on CD, but uh, we're not handling the CD pre-order. Uh, if you go to rumbarrecords.com, if you're a CD okay. fan, you can get the CD from Rumbar Records. Uh, vinyl you can get from us, though. And then we'll be up on all the all the streaming platforms as well. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. All right. So you can check out uh, Indonesian's new junk, uh, Indonesian <laughs> junk's new album, "Living in a Nightmare," due out on on March nineteenth, and we'll play another tune from that. Thank you okay, again cool. for joining us. Really appreciate it. Oh yeah, thank you for having me. I love Absolutely. WMSE too. So. Oh, oh, before we go, I wanted to, I wanted to point this out too for everybody. Um, on the Bandcamp page, if you go to the Bandcamp page you have a full thank you list. Yes. Yeah. And I really appreciate that. Cause I think that's something that's been lost. Yeah. And, um, you know, with everything going digital, it was something I always know that I looked at in like with either liner note in the liner notes. Yeah. So oh, yeah. It's, always, it's always cool to see with all the other bands you think and kind of, you know, get an insight into what you're listening to. So. We think you in that too, right? Am I, am I you correct? Did. That, that, okay. wasn't the, that wasn't the point. I, okay. <laughs> I was trying to remember because I there's so many awesome people at MSE that I try to catch everyone that's like helped us out. So no, absolutely no, yeah. but it, it just it's one of those things where it's always kind of cool to see like you know not just the people but like the venues and the bands, other bands yeah. to check out that you guys yeah. are into and and friends with. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate you guys throwing a thank you oh, thank you list yeah. up there. It's always fun to read through. Yeah, so. I mean, uh, we wouldn't be able to do it without yeah. people that like help us and let us stay on their floors and stuff. So. I guess I want to be able to sh give them a shout out, you know? Cool. Well, thanks cool. for joining us. We really appreciate it. Oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. Yeah.